thank the lord for his goodness i will thank him for bringing us to this final session of this retreat i will thank the lord for what he has spoken to us and what he has revealed to us since we began the retreat we thank him for the corrections he has made i will thank him for the challenges he has given we thank him for the word that came in the power of the spirit from all the ministers the lord sent to us i will thank the lord for those who have recovered all the experiences that were lost for those who are saved for those who are restored and for those who have gone deeper and higher in the lord we thank the lord we pray that what god has done in our hearts in our lives in our families in the church and all over this nation and continent and beyond we pray the lord will keep it permanent in jesus name as we come to this final session we're looking at the message pressing on towards the heavenly home pressing on towards the heavenly home i'm reading from philippians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 13 philippians chapter 3 verse 13 brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before i press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus here we find paul the apostle since he heard the words of the lord from christ himself that word came from heaven and he knew there is a place called heaven and the lord called his name saul saul why persecuted thou me that voice came from above he looked up and he said lord who art thou who are you and he said i am jesus whom you persecute from that point on he knew there is a place called heaven the place where christ has gone and the place from which christ was calling him beyond that he knew another thing he said 14 years ago i knew a man what i the flesh i do not know or in the spirit i do not know but i know that man he was taken to the third heaven and he heard things he couldn't repeat and he saw things he couldn't reveal he said of that man will i glory he's talking about heaven in fact he mentioned it's in paradise and he said because of that i know there is heaven and since that time his heart had been panting he had been yearning he wanted to be there it tells us in philippians chapter 1 reading from verse 21 for me to live is christ and to die is gain he knew that there is heaven and he knew that if he died he'll be going to heaven then he said in verse 22 about if i live in the flesh this is the fruit of my labor yet what i shall choose i know not i what not for i am in a stretch between two weeks between two things he said having a desire to depart and to be with christ which is far better reveals to us that if he died immediately he will be with christ what does that mean his spirit his soul the inner man will be with christ immediately you see when a believer dies his soul his spirit goes to the lord immediately he goes to heaven immediately but the body is here on earth on the day of resurrection is the spirit and the soul in already in heaven that will join with the body here on earth and be resurrected and be glorified but he knew there is heaven 
and because of that he was pressing on he said this one thing i do i have a desire to depart i want to be with the lord he tells us in philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 he had no doubt at all because he knew the reality of heaven he knew the uh, wish the, the, the wonders of heaven and he said i want to be there philippians chapter 3 it tells us in verse 20 philippians chapter 3 verse 24 our conversation is in heaven from ways also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ who shall change a vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself well in your heart there should be no doubt there's a place called heaven you remember when stevie was going to die he looked up to heaven and he saw jesus christ and he said i see jesus is standing at the right hand of the father and while they stoned him he said lord receive my spirit his spirit went to heaven immediately the body was here for the believers to bury that's why paul the apostle now says in philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 14 i press toward the mark of the price for the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus pressing on towards the heavenly home we're looking at hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 those who are pressing on those who realize there is a heaven to gain there is a hell to shun there is a glory to gain there is a suffering to avoid there is a wonder to obtain and there is a hell fire to escape and there is the beauty everlasting the joy everlasting the reward everlasting there is something eternal and everlasting to obtain and there is something everlasting to the fire the suffering the agony and the pressure and the regret everlasting to avoid those who know that they are pressing on and they are pressing on in such a way that all encumbrances and all hindrances and all evil things that will tie them down they shed it off hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses what does that mean a cloud of witnesses that lived here on earth but now they are in heaven that knew that there's a better country there's a more glorious country there's a heavenly country that the almighty god himself has prepared for his own and they're longing for and they're pressing towards and they want that country by all means and the bible says if they had had any desire to have gone back to where they came from they could have had the chance but now they testify and declare there is a better country whose foundation is made by god himself that's why these people now they become like a cloud of witnesses for us and it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses the witnesses of those who endured here on earth and they pressed on until they got there like abraham like abel like enoch like noah and like sarah and like ruth and like moses and like all those israelites were told about in hebrews chapter 11 those clouds of witnesses that they pressed on until they got there he says now it's come to your turn now this is your chance because you have seen this cloud of witnesses let us lay aside you cannot press on until you lay aside all the things that will hinder you let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so doth easily beset us habitual sin besetting sin 
the one you'll be falling into over and over before you came to this retreat the one that brings sorrow in your heart the one that you always get back to the temptation came you couldn't overcome it says lay that aside and press on and have something glorious and something wonderful in front of you it says the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him always have that before you the heavenly goal the heavenly dream the heavenly desire the heavenly possession have that before you. the joy that is set before you that's what jesus did and he set his face like a flinch he knew he was going somewhere do you know you are going somewhere and do you know that the lord expects you you will press on looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of god for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself sinners will try to discourage you they will try to distract you they will try to depress you they will try to send you back they'll try to make you shift your focus and shift your mind and shift your aspiration and shift your desires and shift your dream and shift your goal the sinners will try they will try to contradict what is uppermost in your heart they will try to dissuade you and they will try to make a substitute they'll try to show you something something different from what you're looking for it says at such a time remember you are pressing on towards something your heavenly home it says consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin he said you might have to even lay down your life fighting against sin contending against evil contending against backsliding it might have to be at the price of your blood he said you're not there yet keep on striving and keep on contending and keep on pressing on until you get to that heavenly home will be there in jesus name are you there i say we'll be there in jesus name pressing on every day pressing on every moment pressing on during the retreat pressing on after the retreat pressing on in your place of work pressing on anywhere you find yourself pressing on towards the heavenly home and you're making progress every day and you're getting nearer and nearer every day this is not the time to let down this is not the time to slow down this is not the time to look back because we're almost there if there's anything you ought to do today is to press on your body may not want to you talk to your body press on your surrounding and people around you if you're so tied to them they may be slowing down and they may be slowing you down cut the cut between you and such people press on and it may be that even your own nature you may not be the pressing type you may be the sluggish type you take things easy uh -uh. there's not the time if a house is burning and you need to run out you cannot say i'm not a runner i'm not an athlete I, I i never i'm never in a hurry that's the time to get up the world is going to burn and it says if there is any time at all for you to sum up your courage and for you to say everything within you you bring to the fore and you have to press on 
this is the time pressing on towards the heavenly home there are three things we're going to consider number one single-minded pursuit of the heavenly home single-minded pursuit no other thing you are thinking about no other thing you are planning for and there is no other alternative you don't have any other alternative you say that heavenly home i must be there you have a single-minded pursuit of the heavenly home number two sinful passion driving men towards a horrible hell sinful passion sensual passion careless passion evil passion driving people towards a horrible hell number three steadfast perseverance with heart holiness steadfast perseverance with heart holiness that's what it's going to take you have to persevere because your are coming you have to persevere there's all sides i see you have to persevere different thoughts are coming you have to persevere steadfast perseverance with a heart of holiness Holy, holiness of heart number one single-minded pursuit of the heavenly home there's a heavenly home and we need to pursue whatever happens around us whatever people think about it whatever people do for us or do against us pursue we're looking at acts chapter 7 verse 25 acts chapter 7 and i'm reading here from verse 55 but he talking about stevie being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven looked up steadfastly into heaven he saw heaven before he died he saw the glory before he died there was an assurance within him there's a place called heaven the heavenly home before he died i were told he looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of god he saw the glory he saw the beauty he saw the wonder he saw all that the heart would desire he saw that before he died there are many people that have not seen that they have not seen it in scripture they have not seen it in vision they have not seen it in dream they have not seen it in imagination they have not seen it in their thoughts they have not seen it in their lives that's why they are careless that when you see that glory when you see that beauty when you see that heaven when you read the scriptures and you believe there's a place called heaven you will want to press on and we're told you saw the glory of god and jesus standing on the right hand of god and he said behold he said behold i see they didn't see but he said behold i see they didn't think about that but he said behold i see i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god and then in verse 59 and the stone stephen calling upon god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit he had a single-minded pursuit he said i've seen heaven 